everybody, Simon here. This is the penultimate, the one before the end of Kung and Michael. This is season two, episode one. One more to go. We left it. Michael had come back from America. Kung had sold everything. But she'd put the money in his bank, the whole lot, her money, profit, everything. He had his car on finance. There was the message there saying, Michael, you're special, I love you, and gone. We move forward and Michael's gone to Samui to get a copy of her Thai ID card. He's booked into the hotel they stayed before and he doesn't know. His mind is all over the place. He wants to find her. Stepping back a few weeks, Kung, a matter of two days after Michael took off for a month to America, gets a message on her phone. The message is from her sister-in-law, her brother's wife. Hmm, thought he was uh, gone. The brother is seriously ill, he's in hospital, in a place called Trang, T-R-A-N-G. It's in the middle of the country, but south. So south from Phuket and Samui, heading down towards the Malaysian border. Kung goes back to the hotel, sorts the staff out, tells them she's got to go away for a few days, take care of everything. She jumps in Michael's car, drives off. Five and a half, six hours, maybe six and a half hours. She gets the train. She goes to the hospital where she finds a sister-in-law who she hasn't seen for a very long time. And the brother is critical. She manages to see him. She holds his hand, he smiles at her, a sort of forgiveness smile. 30 minutes, 45 minutes later, he passes away. A hereditary illness. At this point, as a disclaimer, Michael has asked me not to talk about the illness, any illnesses in this story, what they are and details, and asked me to respect that. So. He's passed away, it's hereditary. And Kung's devastated. She sat there with her sister-in-law. Um, they go off back to the brother's house, the sister-in-law's house. And she stays there the evening. They spend a lot of time talking. Kung telling her about her life now. And they caught up, tried to catch up. For all the years they haven't seen each other. Kung's worried, the brother's passed away, the illness. The morning after she says to the sister, I've got to go to the hospital. I've put this off all my life. And she goes to the hospital. She asks them to do all the tests and tells them what's happened with the brother. She spends about four hours there, four and a half hours meeting with the doctor and as she expected the worst um, she leaves the hospital back to the sister-in-law fills her in very upset confused herself not sure She's just lost her brother she decides she's got to go back to Fuka to the hotel so she says goodbye heads off that long journey back Kung makes her decision what she's going to do with the rest of her life. The journey back was a long journey in her head. One week had passed since Michael had gone to America. An old Thai couple had a hotel just a few doors down the road from their hotel and had been hounding Kung about selling their hotel. 
she thought about it on the journey back and she's made her plans now what she's going to do she goes back to the hotel gets all the paperwork to show the books she goes down to see this couple they're there she sits down with them they go every, through everything Kung said to them the hotel's probably worth a lot more 11 and a half 12 million You've got one week if you buy it in one week nine and a half million plus you cover the cost of the lawyers you can have it if you can't no deal everything hinged on that if they hadn't have bought the hotel would Kung have stayed not sure they agreed the following week towards the end of the week they went to the lawyers they did the deal the lawyer transferred all nine and a half million to Michael's account under Kung's instructions the other couple paid all the lawyers fees they did the paperwork done Kung had sold everything in the hotel all the furniture the lot she still had Michael's car there That was it, she decided she was going. She was not going to put Michael through what could happen to her in the future. She'd made that decision. Mm. Back to the hotel, she put his car in the car park, agreed with the new owners, he can stay there till he comes back in a few weeks time. Collected her personal belongings and headed off by taxi, not to return. <clears throat> no contact with Michael, no phone calls, no nothing. Just gone. Michael returns from America to find everything. He's now over in Samui. He's got her Thai ID card. The first thing he's going to do, he's going to go to the police station and see if he can find it a decent police officer that will talk to him so down to the station there's a couple of police there that talk English one of them seems nice hands him the ID card tells him the whole story she's gone missing don't know what's happened to her can he check the system policeman checks the system Except there's no she's on the system there's no history nothing at all from a background there's nothing bad it's all clean but there's no indication anything's wrong or where she is sorry I can't help you and in a way Michael's relieved that there's no sudden there's no hidden background where she's been doing bad bad things that was in his mind it's all clean which is a nice surprise, but it doesn't help him. She's gone. He's totally back to square one. Michael now spends the next three months wandering around Samui, Phuket, backwards and forwards, going into salons, into shops with photo, asking everybody. Nothing at all. He's talking to his friends in Patera a lot. He's exhausted every avenue, he can't find her, she's just disappeared. There's no trail. At this point he's sort of half given up and he's, I can't just keep doing this. And he asks his friends to find a condo near the Mimpatea and they find one. And he takes his car and he drives up all the way up north to Bangkok and round and back down to Patea to a condo they found. He wants to rent it month by month. He doesn't want to sign a long lease at this point. Doesn't know what he's doing with his life. He also gets on the phone and redirects his box, which is coming from America with his personal possessions in. <coughs> he moves his bank from Phuket back to Patea. His other four million bars come across, that's in their name. He's set up, he's got money, boxes come in, car, Okay, you can pay that off easy if you want. It's on finance. He's got his condo. And he keeps finding himself on Beach Road looking at that lamppost. Nothing happens. He can't find him. Time 
moves on. Goes on a year. And we're now up to November 2015 in real time. Those dates are hard to keep up with. Nothing's happened. Not found her. Not heard anything. He's given up. He had a fabulous time with her, but he's got a big hole now in his life without her. He'll never know what happened to her. She disappeared. Just totally disappeared. November 2015, Michael gets a phone call. It's from his lawyer in Phuket. As soon as the lawyer speaks, I found her, another lawyer searching online for you. It came up on the searches, we're, we're linked together or whatever. Um, but it's a few months old. He's been searching for you for four or five months. And there's some paperwork at that lawyer's. The lawyer is based in Trang, T-R-A-N-G. Michaels doesn't know what to think. Who does he know in Thailand that would use a lawyer to contact him? There's only one person. It's got to be Kung. Why a lawyer? He fears the worst. Lawyers usually, you know, it's buying and selling property or it's someone passing. So he arranges with this lawyer from Phuket. He asks him, can you come with me? Spend a couple of days there, we'll sort it out and see what it is. And we'll meet up down there. He said, I'll pay you whatever the going rate is. Can you book a room, a hotel for the two of us? And I'll meet you there in, say, two days' time. Can you arrange with that other lawyer for us to come? And the lawyer in Phuket, I'll arrange it all. I'll come back to you with the address of the hotel and I'll see you there in a few days. And Michael heads off to Trang to meet his Phuket lawyer and his lawyer from Trang. They arrive, he arrives at the hotel, they check in at night, the next morning, they go to the lawyers and they walk into the lawyers and to meet the lawyer. So luckily he's, he's brought his Phuket lawyer along because he can translate, speaks good English. And they sit down with this lawyer and that's where I'm going to leave the penultimate episode. <laughs> A little cliffhanger for you. Tomorrow, final episode, to the conclusion, and hopefully the answers that so many of you are asking. Bye for now.